Well, hello and welcome to another word in season. I recently read a quote from the novel Judas by Amos Oz. It was a conversation between two people and it went like this. The question was asked, take the combined power of the Soviet Union and the United States and France and Britain. What can you not achieve with such power by any means or manner? The reply was this. I think that with such power you could conquer whatever you felt like, from sea to sea. The other person responded, That's what you think. That's what the Jews in Israel think, because they have no notion of the limit of power. The fact is that all the power in the world cannot transform someone who hates you into someone who likes you. It can turn a foe into a slave, but not into a friend. All the power in the world cannot transform a fanatic into an enlightened man. All the power in the world cannot transform someone thirsting for vengeance into a lover. What an answer. All the power in the world, all the power of the Soviet Union, the US, France and Britain cannot turn a foe into a friend, but can, of course, very easily turn a foe into a slave. Jesus understood this so well which is why he was such an anomaly to the Jews when he came as a crucified Messiah. The creator of all did not come with power in the sense of force, but with humility and love. He offers the gift of life, but does not demand we receive it, for only love turns a foe into a friend. This surely is part of God's pain as he knows with immense compassion the suffering in our world, our suffering, and longs to offer his comfort and love, but he will not force his love. Because it is not then not love, but power that's at work. We see this love portrayed so tenderly in the story of the prodigal son. It is love itself that prevented the father keeping his beloved prodigal child at home, at all cost, by force. He could have not given that inheritance, and the son had no means to leave home. He would have been forced to stay. Instead, he allowed his child to find his own life, even with the risk of losing it. God loves us so much that we are free to leave home. He doesn't force us to stay obedient. Though free to leave home, This father is always looking, watching and waiting, with outstretched arms to welcome his children back, with all their weariness and weaknesses, with their broken sandals and worn out garments, and whisper again, You are my beloved, on you my favour rests. His seeing is an eternal seeing, a seeing that reaches out to all humanity across all ages. It is a seeing that understands the lostness of women and men of all times and places, that knows with immense compassion the suffering of those who have chosen to leave home. The heart of this father burns with such desire to bring his children home. He suffers beyond telling when his children leave home, when their hearts are far from him. But he cannot make them love him without losing his fatherhood. From the deep inner place where love embraces all human grief, the father reaches out to his children and he seeks only to heal. The heart of this father has always been open. His arms are always stretched out. He waits. There's pain and disappointment in the waiting and in the hoping, yet he never pulls back his arms. He never stops loving. Henry Nouwen writes in his book, The Return of the Prodigal. Here is a father who from the beginning of creation has stretched out his arms in merciful blessing, never forcing himself on anyone, but always wanting, never letting his arms drop down in despair, but always hoping that his children will return so that he can speak words of love to them and let his tired arms rest on their shoulders. His only desire is to bless. Brennan Manning describes this love as God's relentless, furious longing for humanity. He says, 
There is nowhere God won't go to find us, no country too distant, no terrain too treacherous, no risk too great, and there are no boundaries to where his love will take him in order to find us, embrace us, and carry us home. We read in Luke 15, 20, from a long distance away, his father saw him coming. He was obviously waiting and watching, and he instantly recognized the familiar gait of his beloved son. His son dressed as a beggar, and with great compassion, he swelled up in his heart for his son, who was returning home. The father raced out to meet him, swept him up in his arms, hugged him dearly, and kissed him over and over with tender love. Though God has all the power in the world, he doesn't win us by power, but by his loving kindness. If you feel distant from God, if you've wandered from home even a little, remember God's arms are always open, waiting to embrace again with his relentless, powerful love. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells, that is, makes his home in the shelter of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. That's our home. That's our safe place. That's where God invites us to come and rest. He won't force us. He loves us too much for that. But he waits and watches, ready to embrace the tired and weary, the disappointed and despondent, those who feel unworthy over and over again. Such is his relentless love. So let me leave you with the words of an old hymn that I love. O love that will not let me go, that is, will not forget me or give up on me, I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. Amen.